Hey everybody, I told you I was going to put out a video this evening and I finally got home from the office and I am going to give you some shocking information that was sent to me by a parent and I'm not going to name names, I'm going to keep that anonymous for their sake. But this is out of a high school that is in Farmville, it's called Farmville Central High School, and it's in North Carolina. It is a vocabulary list, and it is a sentence completion ex uh, exercise also that's attached to it. You ready? So I'm going to give you a word, and then I'm going to give you a sentence that describes or is you, that word is used in so to help the students understand how to use that word. Aptitude. Although Muhammad apparently did not have a formal education, he seems to have had a good aptitude for business because he learned the merchant trade. Astute. It is entirely possible that Muhammad was an astute or shrewd merchant but at about the age of 40, he gave up his career as a merchant and became a religious hermit. Conducive. Muhammad was familiar with the teachings of Judaism and Christianity, found solitude to be conducive to understanding proper faith. He also found meditation to be helpful. Mosque. In 630, after war with the Meccans, Muhammad entered the city of Mecca as a victor and proclaimed the sacred shrine, Kaaba, to be a mosque. He first had to destroy the pagan idols before he could declare Kaaba a house of worship. Pastoral. Muhammad is not thought of as a pastoral preacher who went into the country to convert people. He is identified with the cities of Mecca and Medina. Quantitative. His success could be measured not only in quantitative ways, the numbers of followers of Islam, but also in a qualitative way, the improvement in people's lives. <laughs> zenith. The zenith of any Muslim's life is a trip to Mecca. The trip is the highest point of a Muslim's earthly path because Mecca is considered the Muslim's holy city. Recur. Ramadan recurs every year as the ninth month of the Muslim lunar calendar. Ramadan is remembered as the time during which Muhammad received the Quran, Islam's holy book from the Archangel Gabriel. Can you see my rage building up? Requisite. Following the five pillars of faith, it is a requisite part of Muslim religious duties. The required duties include giving to the poor. Now, let's go over to the exercise. The exercise gives a sentence, and in the sentence there's one or two blanks. And it gives four or five answers, A through E, that you can choose to fill in the blanks. Now, I'm not going to worry about the blanks. The blanks aren't important. The, point, the important part is the rest of the sentence. So, example number one. I imagine myself in the place that I've been reading about. This lesson has been blank, too. That is, has led to an imaginary trip to the ancient Islamic world. Number two, how do I get there? I imagine myself looking up at the blank, the point in the sky directly above me, and there I am. Three, I find myself first on the edge of blank village where I'm surrounded by sheep. Four, fortunately, I meet a man with a blank for giving instruction, uh, directions 
as I have no talent along those lines, and he tells me how to reach Medina. Five, Muhammad has just finished speaking when I arrive, but I hope the opportunity to hear, I hope the opportunity to hear him blank, I'd like another chance. Six, there are such vast numbers of people who are anxious to spread the Muslim faith that it would be impossible to give blank amount. Seven, you could say that my trip schedule is blank because I'm not certain where I will be next. It may be bl a blank field where a battle is taking place. Catch that? It may be a blank field where a battle is taking place. The next one, now I'm in Cordova where the number of beautiful buildings seems too great to be blank estimated. This city must reflect the blank, the peak of Muslim architecture. Next one, I'm making a blank trip to a blank. There are many here and it is a necessity that I visit one of these places of worship. <laughs> the last one, an observer who is blank or keen would notice on this trip how a sense of excitement and change blank. It can be felt everywhere from time to time. Now, my friends, this isn't made up. This isn't paranoia. This isn't Islamophobia. This is fact. It's right here. And what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to take a picture of each page and I'm going to attach it underneath this video as a uh, post, link, thread, whatever you call it, so that you can see it for yourselves and you can share it. I am also going to put in the mailing address of this high school. I am also going to put in the physical address of this high school. I also talked with my husband when I got home about this, and as you all can imagine from his, lap, his video, that uh, he didn't take this very well. He is going to be contacting this high school tomorrow, and he is going to be asking to speak to the principal. He is going to be asking to set up an appointment to physically sit down with this principal and have a meeting if the principal will allow it with this teacher. He is going to take money out of his own pocket to do this. He feels that strongly about it. Now, my guess is that this principal, once he finds out that my husband is, number one, not a parent of a child at this school, uh, is going to say no. Number two, he is going to say no just on the basis that of what he wants to talk about is this teacher in this Islam situation. What I want to know is how many of you, if you have friends that live in Farmville, North Carolina, please, for the love of God, spread this video to them. Make them aware of what is going on, even if they don't have children. If they have, child, if they have grandchildren that are coming up in that school district or anywhere near that school district, they need to be beating the doors of the principal's office. This is not an email situation. This is not a phone call situation. This is a I'm going to get in your face situation and I have some I have some questions and I'm going to demand some answers. This is when is the next school board meeting? We all need to be there. Not one of us. All of us. Any person in that school district whether you have a child there or not, you need to be at your next school board meeting with a copy of this. Message me. I will give you a copy of this. Or you can copy it off of the link that I'm going to give you. This is the time for action. Do you all understand what they're doing? When is the last time 
that you saw your son or daughter, grandson or granddaughter, come home from public school with a lesson, a curriculum lesson built around God, around Jesus Christ, around Buddha. When's the last time? Thought this wasn't allowed. Thought they didn't allow religion, religion into schools. I know that Muslim is not a religion. Everyone else wants to classify it as a religion. So why is it being allowed into schools? They are indoctrinating our children again, continuing to indoctrinate them. They've been indoctrinating them. Now they're taking it to a whole new level, my friends. Okay? Parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, friends. Find out what your kids, what your neighbor's kids, what your grandkids, what your, if you don't even have anybody that's in school, what is your local school teaching? What are they using as curriculum? Go to your school board meetings. Go to their classes. If you're a grandparent, go and help out, volunteer. Check your child's, your grandchild's schoolwork. Check their backpacks. Check their take-home work. Go to their school and demand. Ask first. But if you get resistance, then demand to see their portfolios of their work for the year. If this kind of crap is in there, it's not time for an email. It's not time for a phone call. It's time for a, a get your butt in the vehicle, drive down there, and start pounding on the door. Okay? They are making it so that Muhammad... Allah, Islam, oh, it's just, look at the beautiful architecture, and oh, we're taking this magical, wonderful trip to this, oh, this beautiful place. Do you get it? Do you understand what they're doing? Do you see what they're doing, people? They're infiltrating our children's minds. It's coming. It's here. It's not coming. It's here. What are we going to do? I know what my husband and I are going to do. We're taking a trip to North Carolina. Okay? Anybody who wants to go, if we're able to set this appointment with this principal, and we may, we may go even if we're not able to set an appointment. We may go and just camp out on the damn doorstep. Okay? That's the information that I have recovered. Uh, and actually, I didn't recover it. I parents sent it to me and I thank you very much for doing so. I'm still in shock. I'm going to be I'm going to admit it to you. I am outraged, but I'm still in shock that of the boldness of this situation. I I would assume that this this teacher is one of three people. She's either a Muslim She's either a liberal or she's just an idiot. Well, I guess the other two are idiots too most of the time. But anyway, she needs to be fired. Period. Needs to be fired. She's crossed the line. This is, to me, this is not a school lesson, okay? This is propaganda to recruit. Do you understand the wordage that's being used here? The subliminal, oh, it's beautiful, and it's an imaginary, and it's um, uh, anxious, I'm anxious to be there, and it's a necessity. Do you understand the wording and why they're doing this? Do you understand who is making our curriculum now? Did, I, did you hear the video that I covered months ago about... The, the makers of our curriculum and who's influencing them now and the money that they're paying them to do this. Do you get it now? Is it coming through? Is it is the light bulb going off? It's not such a big, you know, conspiracy theory, is it? Our kids are at risk, people. It's time to demand action.